Good afternoon. Thank you for joining this webinar about AOPEN Chromebox and Chrome-based mini devices. I'm Eric Sira, Business Development Manager Europe for AOPEN. And uh, today we're going to introduce you the new device that we're launching at uh, this very moment. Um, the setup of the day will be uh, that I'm going to talk a little bit about the Open for the people who don't know us yet. Um, I'll give you a short introduction about why Chrome devices. Uh, it's more of a kind of a recap from last webinar and about Chrome Device Management Console. And then we will jump into the major topic about AOPEN Chrome Mini Devices. At the end of the session, we will have a Q&A. And during the session itself, you can uh, ask questions in the Q via the Q&A button. And at the end, we will try to answer as many as possible. Well, the first topic is about AOPEN. Um, as you probably all know, uh, AOPEN is a manufacturer of small form factor uh, PCs uh, built for 24-7 applications. Uh, we are a highly qualified supplier for the digital signage market, and we are certified by the leading digital signage software vendors. Um, we exclusively work via partner channel of dis dis distributors and uh, resellers, as well as Google for Work partners, are, which are resellers from us, who we support to deliver to the end customer. Um, and we have a high level of knowledge and services to support our partners in into projects. So a little bit more about the big overview about AOPEN. Uh, we are part of uh, the Panacea group. And below the Panacea group, you have Acer, BankQ, and Wistron. And AOPEN is part of the Wistron group. So um, we are part of a, a very big environment, but eventually AOPEN is a, is a company that defines its own strategy and structure. We have uh, offices uh, all around the world. Um, our HQ is based in Taiwan, Taipei, and we have regional side offices in every region. So in North America, Europe, Japan, China, and Australia. And from those local or regional offices, we support our partners and projects to do global rollouts. So the next topic is about why Chrome devices. Um, I will do a little recap about why Chrome devices, but I would also like to refer to the uh, web webinar we did uh, earlier last year. Um, you can find that webinar on youtube.com slash aopeneurope. And it's a webinar called Why Aopen Commercial Chrome Devices, where Ruben van der Stock from Google explains more uh, about Chrome OS and Chrome Management Console. So this will be a short recap about this. So why Chrome devices? Chrome devices are fast, secure, and cost-efficient computers that run on Chrome OS, um, which can be centrally managed. And I think that's, that's one of the key features of the total platform that is provided by Google. Um, the hardware itself, the OS, and as well the, the management of it. Um, this this uh, is divided in uh, several topics, the devices, operating system, management, and flexibility. And I will do a short recap of those in the next few slides. So about the devices, each Chrome device has to be certified by Google. That's not only for open devices, but also for devices from other manufacturers. Um, that means there is a, a Google can really make sure that the devices work in the, in a, in the right way and give the, a lot of performance. Um, what is important to notice is that there is only one OS version available for each device. So if you have a open device or a device from a different manufacturer, the OS version is the same. Um, as well, devices are simple, reliable, or they say no moving parts. AOPEN is the only manufacturer with devices that have no moving parts or are fanless. And that means they are more reliable because without a fan, you have less uh, chance of failures due to fans. Um, another important topic is that each device has a redundant copy of the operating system. So you have the original OS on the system and a redundant copy. If something goes wrong, uh, the device are able to uh, do, a, uh, do a recovery of the system by uh, putting the redundant copy on the, on, the, on the system itself. And last is that the devices all work with a TPM module or TPM chip that's for hardware encryption to make it very secure. So a quick look at the operating system. Um, the operating system itself is free to manufacture, so, so you don't pay any, any money for the o OS itself. Um, and they work with automatic updates. So every six weeks, there's a new update of the stable release of Chrome OS. However, they have two different versions as well. Um, you have the stable release that's on e each device worldwide, and you have a better release and development mode. And this makes it able to test 
uh, new features, new updates in the OS before it will be released on a stable release. Uh, so it's very easy to manage this via the Chrome management console. Um, the last thing is it's very secure. That has to do with the OS itself and of course with the TPM module, but also the way that Google um, has programmed their OS in sandboxes so that not each different applications can interact with each other. And it makes it very secure. So management has to do with the Chrome management console. And I think that's, as I mentioned before, is one of the, the, the good features about the, the complete solution. Uh, because you can manage all your the complete fleet of devices, if it's A open or from another manufacturer, via that one console. Uh, and you can manage their uh, uh, po different policies, different settings, and I will explain that a little bit later. Um, so uh, you can monitor and uh, create notifications. You can see CPU load and you can do also remote troubleshooting. Uh, so like a, a screen grab or uh, the, the reboot or uh, stuff like that. Chrome OS is also very flexible. It's based on industry standards. Uh, so uh, especially on HTML5, if, if someone is able to develop on HTML5, you are able to develop a Chrome kiosk app or a Chrome app. Um, then uh, it has a broad support for peripherals. And, and I think important in that one is that uh, all a right range of USB, USB devices can be used on Chrome OS. However, it needs to be an HID compliant device. That's a standard in the market, but it's always good to verify this if you will want to use an external touchscreen or other devices on Chrome devices. And, uh, and there's a one unique feature for Open that's the RG50 uh, peripheral uh, possibility. Because on the Chromebox commercial, we have an RG50 port, um, which you can connect to a screen via an RG50 to a serial uh, converter to control the screen, for example, on off of the screen. Or on the Chrome base 22 inch, we have uh, four of those RG50 ports, for example, to uh, put a, a receipt printer, connect the receipt printer to it or other stuff. Um, it's one platform for a different kind of use cases. In general, in our industry, we use the kiosk mode. And kiosk mode means that um, if you start up the device and it's uh, pushed to kiosk mode via the Chrome management console, um, the device will start up, go eventually, uh, automatically through the credential phase and give you directly a full blown application, which you cannot exit. So you can only exit it via uh, external, an external way or via the Chrome management console, but it's not able, you're not able to just exit the application. So now we're going to talk about Chrome Device Management Console. Also, this will be a quick recap, and as I referred before, uh, I would uh, suggest to, to watch the uh, webinar we did before on about the uh, Chrome devices, where Ruben van der Stock explains a little bit more about this. Um, the Chrome Management Console, gives it's, it's a web-based portal, so uh, from any browser you can access this to manage your complete fleet of devices. And you have different kind of uh, policies and categories. One is user settings. That's something that we don't use in the digital science industry because we don't talk about users, but we talk about a group of devices. Uh, and uh, very important is the network settings, device settings, that where you define the behavior of your devices. Uh, public session settings is also maybe less used in our market. And it's, it's of course, very important, the kiosk settings, where you can uh, push the device into that kiosk mode. Um, yeah, you can do a lot. I think there are approximately 250 different policies. I can't explain them all, uh, but uh, there are a lot of possibilities via Chrome Management Console. Um, in general, what you can do if you enroll a device once via the Chrome Management Console, uh, the rest of management of the device is done via this tool. So you don't need to go locally to the device. As long as it's connected to the internet, you can do a lot of stuff like rebooting, pushing different apps to it via this Management Console. Now we're going to touch the most important topic, a open Chrome mini devices, which I'm very enthusiastic about, and we're going to reveal the new devices. Um, you see here, that's the Chrome box mini, and uh, mini is not a lie, because if you see the current Chrome box we have, I hope it's, people can see it on the camera, it's quite small. Um, so I'm very happy with this device. It's, uh, it's uh, of course, uh, uh, a, a, a nice device, a nice form factor. Uh, as well, it's, uh, it's for us a good device for uh, the digital signage market as more entry-level system. As well, the Chrome Base Mini, and that's a unique device into the Chrome device range. It's a 10.1-inch touchscreen, can use for 
uh, kind of different, uh, different applications, um, but we will touch those topics later on. But as you see, two very nice new devices, so we're uh, going to discuss them now. Um, so kind of different kind of applications, uh, what you can think of about uh, with the, Chrome, the new Chrome devices is, of course, digital signage. As you all know, we are uh, quite uh, famous in this market, or kiosk market, as well point of sale or meeting room management. And I think especially meeting room management is quite interesting, as you see in the picture on the right side in the, in the corner. Um, you can use it in two different ways. On one hand, you could use it on, as a, a room guidance system outside of a meeting room to book a meeting room or to see what's the schedule during a, during on a, in a meeting room. But on the other hand, you could also use it as a room control system. So if you would have a, a certain uh, Chrome application uh, that could um, um, communicate to AV systems, you could be able to control your meeting room via a, a 10 inch Chrome base. And that's quite interesting uh, development also for, for AOPEN. Some other applications are product information kiosk or self-service kiosk. Think about retail environments where people can find the related product they want. Uh, if a product is not in store, for example, and they can still find it and maybe uh, order it there as well. Or check-in, check-out systems um, where you would, uh, you could use this in big um, factory environments um, or in big warehouses or retail stores where a lot of personnel is coming in and you want to check who is coming in. Then we would have a 10-inch Chrome base at the door. People have their own code log in and you know which employee is on site at that moment. Um, Self-service reception or uh, a secured browser experience, for example, in banks, where you want to do online banking for customers and you want to provide them a tool where they can do an uh, online banking in a secure way. Uh, a 10 inch would be very suitable for that kind of purposes. Uh, ordering kiosk or customer satisfaction survey kiosk, which you see more and more the last few years in, in retail environments where people can like a store in the physical store itself in, instead of going uh, online on Facebook or whatever. So now we jump to, into the product specifications about the Chromebox Mini and Chrome based Mini. Um, I will go not uh, or don't talk too long about the uh, specs in this case. However, it's good to mention it. Um, for the CPU point of view, both systems has the same CPU. It's a Rockchip RK3288. Um, probably some of you know there are other manufacturers that use the same Rockchip in their Chrome devices. Uh, I want to mention that there's uh, a, a, quite, a, a, quite a difference between uh, those and, and we, because we are able to empower 100% of the CPU in, in our devices. And that has to do with the thermal flow we have designed in our devices. So we see uh, some better performance on that side. And that also has to do that we have two times two gigabyte of memory. So um, both devices have the same specs. Um, and uh, we can uh, provide you with some spec, spec sheets on request if, if necessary. Some feature about the Chrome Mini devices. Um, as you know, uh, in general, we have auto power resumption on all our devices, if it's Chrome or not. As well, the Chrome Mini devices have this function, which means eventually if the power comes on the device, it will automatically start. That's not in general for Chrome devices, but the open Chrome devices has this feature because we know how important it is in retail environments that the device starts up automatically when power is, is on the device. Um, because a lot of times in retail environments, at the end of the day, people lock down the building, all the power is from, uh, fr uh, off the devices, uh, besides maybe the cash register or uh, the security cameras, and in the morning, the power comes up back on the store, and then the devices need to boot up automatically. Uh, as well, we have the secure power connector. It's a simple feature, but it's a very important feature that people cannot pu pull out the power plug of the device on the Chrome box. Uh, mini, we have a lockable power connector, and on the Chrome base mini, we have an I.O. cover, which uh, makes it very secure in that case, and that people cannot pull it out. Of course, there are fanless systems, and the ultra small form factor, as already mentioned, it's, I think, half the size of the standard Chrome box we have, so it's very, very thin and slim. Um, and um, good to mention that there is a standard warranty term of one year on the device, and we can extend the warranty up to three years uh, for additional costs. So some other features about the Chrome Mini devices and, and some I'm very enthusiastic about is especially the support Android Kiosk apps. 
Um, as maybe some of you already have seen is that Google announced it, that they will support Android uh, kiosk apps on the Chrome mini devices, and then you will be able to push the Android app via the Chrome management console. Um, it could mean that it uh, needs some small adjustments in coding, uh, but it can run. Uh, some, we already tested some, and some run out of the box, and some uh, run after some small coding. Um, a very important thing as well to mention is that the kiosk mode is only available in the Chrome Mini devices via the Chrome Management Console. So in the past, it was a, a, you were able to put them in kiosk mode also in different ways, and now it's only available via the Chrome Management Console. The next one is the alternate, the alternative for tablets. And the reason why I mentioned this very specifically is that we've seen a lot of tablets used in retail environments the last few years. Um, we also have seen and heard a lot of fail, failures and failed projects the last years. A thing about uh, normal tablets that are not built for this kind of purposes for 24-7 usage to have uh, the power continuously on the tablet or uh, iPads or whatever. Um, so you've seen, we've seen swelling batteries, uh, all kinds of stuff. And I think that's the interesting part of the Chrome Base Mini. It's built for this kind of application. It is built for put, uh, connect to the power continuously. So it's a very good alternative and it's a very fluent experience as well with the management console. You just push the app to the device or push uh, the website you wanna uh, run on the device to the device via the management console and you're, you're done. You can run your application or run your website in, into a retail environment or whatever. Um, it's also uncomparable to consumer grade hardware. Of course, that has related to the, the tablet part. Um, it's built for this kind of applications for 24 seven. So um, I think people that are known in the market can, can uh, agree on this one, um, but it's always good to, to mention this uh, specifically. So a little bit more in depth about the Chromebox Mini. Um, I think we already touched uh, some of those topics um, because it's a tamper-proof design for 24-7 usage. Um, it's the smallest Chrome device form factor available in the market today. Chromeboxes, of course, is one device that's a little bit smaller, but it is also different from performance point of view. And it's a very cost-efficient solution. Um, if you want to know more about the pricing of the Chrome boxes and Chrome base units, the new, the new devices, then I would suggest to reach out to the, uh, uh, the regional channel salespeople or just pop up a message to the request at aopen.com and we can refer you to the right person. Um, it's a solid state and fanless design, of course, and auto power we already discussed. Standard in the box, there is uh, also the antennas. So um, you don't, we have external antennas because we have a metal chassis and it's necessary to have a good reach. Um, that's why we have external antennas. Um, you can mount it, for example, on a desk or under a desk or behind a small monitor because it's very small. It fits in almost every space. So the Chrome Base Mini, the Chrome Base Mini, of course, it's a 10 inch, it's a 10.1 inch to, to be specifically, and it's a, a touch device. Um, it is, has an IP54 front, and um, there's one thing I didn't mention yet. It's, uh, it has a highly qualified camera and speakers to meet uh, the Chrome video conference and Hangouts requirements. So that's maybe interesting for some of you to think about that kind of applications with the Chrome Base Mini. Uh, it has a wide viewing angle. It can be uh, used in landscape and portrait. Standard in the box, there is also a, s a simple and small mounting bracket, which you can put in different ways on the device to put it in a portrait mode or in a landscape mode. Um, standard warranty, as mentioned before, is one year, extendable up to three years. So I wanna thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, we will now jump into the Q&A part. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, hopefully you will reach out to us later on with if there are any specific questions. Thank you.